रे मैं तो अपनी भूल गई आए छाप तिलक सब छीन ली रे वो से मैना मिलाई के poetry music and love all these three different subjects connect to one thing the idea that emerged after the rise of islam that is sufism and amir khusro is the person who is considered from among the group of most important people who helped in the spread of sufism and its idea of love and tolerance for everyone in india Abul Hasan Yamaluddin Khusro or better known as Amir Khusro was an Indian musician scholar and a poet he was a sufi mystic and a spiritual disciple of Nizamuddin Auliya of Delhi Amir Khusro was not only a notable poet but also a prolific musician he is an iconic figure in the cultural history of Indian subcontinent he wrote poetry primarily in persian but also in hindavi Hindavi is a mixture of Urdu, Hindi, Persian and Arabic. It is the language used mostly by the Sufis. Amir Khusro is regarded as the father of Qawwali. Qawwali is the devotional music of Indian Sufis. He is also credited with enriching Hindustani or Indian classical music by introducing Persian and Arabic elements in it. He is also the originator of khayal and tarana style of music. The invention of tabla is also traditionally attributed to Amir Khusro. Amir Khusro was born in Patiali near Eta. His father Amir Saifuddin Mahmud was a Turkic officer and a member of the Lajin tribe of Traxonia. Traxonia is the Latin name for the region located in the lower central Asia. Amir Khusro's family belonged to the Kara Khitas, also known as the Western Liao dynasty. However, Amir Khusro eclipsed all his predecessors. His interest was kaleidoscopic and his mind was versatile. He enjoyed fame in the field of Persian poetry in which his position is next to Saadi and can be compared to Hafiz in lyrics. Amir Khusro's life story is truly an inspiring one. He is regarded as one of the first recorded Indian dignitaries who is also a household name. Amir Khusro lost his father at a very young age and then he moved in with his maternal grandparents. His grandfather worked as a soldier attendant master at Emperor Gayasuddin Balban's royal palace. When Khusro accompanied his grandfather to the royal courts to attend private congregations, he was exposed to all famous literary figures of his time. This inspired him to pursue poetry and fine arts such as music. He also learned to ride a horse and was trained in martial arts. It was this time when he met his murshid or his mentor Nizamuddin Auliya. From Sultan Balban to Muhammad bin Tughlaq Amir Khusro served seven kings but his attachment to his birthplace Delhi was so strong that when he was assigned to Patiali he not only lamented but also wrote a masnavi titled Shikayat Nama e Patiali meaning condemning Patiali and recalling the beauty and pleasure of his hometown Delhi in this masnavi he compares himself to Joseph mentioned both in the Bible and Quran who when separated from his hometown of Canaan felt distressed and always complained about it Amir Khusro was a devout Muslim he was the friend and disciple of Nizamuddin Auliya he was a profound expounder of ethics and strict observant of sharia 
According to him, Sharia acquires meaning when it maintains a close relationship with reality, partaking in the essence of the love of God. If Sharia is lacking in that, or in other words, if Sharia is without Ain, the Arabic alphabet which is used to signify the essence of God's love, then it becomes Shar or evil. His attitude toward the fake Sufis or the Sufis of hypocrisy was very critical. In fact, Amir Khusro's spiritualism was based on his philosophy of love, which he lo- which he shared with all Sufis. His poetry's depth of humanism stems from the source of divine love. He has written 99 works that cover almost every aspect of life. In short, Amir Khusro was a true legend. Khusro's humanism transcended all color, caste, creed, and barriers, making him more of a calendar. Calendar meaning a person with a free soul who do not discriminate on anything or anyone. In an autocratic era when the king's willful action were unrestricted, Khusro had the courage to speak before the king about the importance of human equality. Khusro was adored by his mentor Nizamuddin Aulia because of his the, because of his qualities and his philosophy of love. He was so close to his master that Nizamuddin Aulia said that anyone who comes to visit his grave must visit Amir Khusro's grave and then his. Amir Khusro died only a few months after his master's death. He was laid to rest to the feet of his mentor. His shrine is located in New Delhi near Nizamuddin Dargah. Up to the age of 16, he attempted to emulate the author of whatever book he happened to come across. His adolescence was ushered in both by Mufti Muizuddin Gharifi and his mentor Nizamuddin Aulia. Both of them pointed him in the direction of Saddi and Kamal Ashfahani's style. Even when he was young, he used to criticize his contemporaries, including Hassan Dahelvi in Kita. Amir Khusro opened the door of discipleship for all kinds of men, whether they were poor, rich, men, women, noble, or a fakir. But in order to become Amir Khusro's disciple, a person must abstain from improper behavior and if anyone committed a sin, he would come to Khusro and confess his guilt as well as renew his discipleship. Because of Khusro's influence, most people in the area, regardless of their caste or creed, became involved in tasawwuf that is mysticism or Sufism and Turk that is renunciation. Scholars visiting Khusro would discuss books on Tasawwuf or Sufism such as Nizamuddin Awliya's Fawadul Fuad, Kutul Kulub, Iyaul Ulum, Kashful Mahjub, Awarif and Malfuzat. People went to bookstores in search of suluk related books. These suluk related books were books for self-control. Because of increased demand among the Sufis for Lota, which is a water vessel used for specifically for cleansing rituals and a tasht that is a basin for washing hands, the prices of these items had slightly increased, indicating that the majority of people at that time were inclined toward a spiritual Sufi lifestyle because of Amir Khusro. Amir Khusro was a Hindu-Muslim unity ambassador during his time. His Hindi or Hindavi poetry for which he is well known among the school-going children and elderly generation. In the Chishti order when they conduct Sama, Sama is the grouping of Sufis or people interested in Sufism, in Samas they usually talk about Tasawwuf or recite poetries or devotional musics. Hindi poetry holds the same elevated position as Persian poetry. This is due to the language's close association with Amir Khusro and his master Nizamuddin Aulia. Furthermore, like other vernaculars used in poetry, Hindi is a regional language that has spread beyond the immediate area where it is spoken. 
The Kawals who perform in the Sama assemblies use Hindi, which can be heard everywhere. Other vernacular poetic traditional languages such as Sindhi, Kashmiri, Punjabi, and Bengali are only heard in their respective regions. The Hindi used by the Sufis is not the standard Hindi that we speak or the people of India speak nowadays. It is often referred to rather vaguely as Hindavi. or an indian language this language has many variants it is also called purabi hindi the eastern language or dakhni hindi the southern language the latter also refers to dakhni urdu a popular variant of urdu which is spoken widely in the deccan region of india the beginning of sufi literature in hindi is popularly traced back to amir khusro Amir Khosro is credited with several innovation in Indian classical music dating back to the Middle Ages. Though Khosro is best known outside India for his Persian poetry, he is also remembered in India for his numerous alleged contribution to Indian music. The following is how the author of an Persian poetry anthology describes Amir Khosro's talent. Amir Khosro a super musician in his own right and credited with the invention of several musical instrument as well as laying the theoretical foundation for much of Indo-Muslim music Amir Khosro gave ghazals and literature that melody that ensured their inclusion in Indian musical programs to the present day Amir Khosro's reputation as a Persian poet is well deserved He was a court poet to seven kings in Delhi the most notable of whom was Sultan Alauddin Khilji Amir Khosro was well known in the Persian world as Amir Khosro at Delhi or the Khosro of Delhi However contemporaries historian remember him as a poet rather than a musician for example Farishta who describes the court of Alauddin Khilji in detail includes Khosro's name among those mentioned in the poet section not among the kawals or musician in this video we attempt to start a critical examination of Amir Khosro's contribution to Indian music Hazrat Amir Khosro ka ilm e mausiqi meaning the music of Amir Khosro by Rashid Malik is a very important book in Urdu that deals extensively with this subject however it is not available in english right now but i have provided the link in description you can check it out if you speak urdu or understand urdu Amir Khosro upheld not only the values of equality and dignity but also the principle of social justice. When he heard about Nizamuddin Auliya's death in Lucknow, he immediately arrived and went to his grave where he blackened his face, rolled over in the dust in utter grief, teared his garment. 6 months later on Friday 29th on 1325 AD he died his death is not the literal death because he will always be remembered as one of literature's few unforgotten legends if you liked my efforts in this video make sure to check out my previous video where i have explained about the basic terminology in sufism and how it influenced the whole world